Come on, girl. We've got some pretty talented people here, but none of us have done this before. Will this make big enough a big enough yeah. wolf for the? Yeah. Ben and Chris and Fran are going to go capture the animals with net guns. Each animal gets a measles swab, and that swab goes to Sherry. At least one person is going to have to stay with that animal until we determine what its positive or negative status is. What do we do when we find a positive? You tell me. Yep. And then we're going to kill them. organism that we've been talking about is Mycoplasma ova pneumoniae. Mycoplasma is a family of very fragile little bacteria. They're tiny. They're somewhere between a virus and a bacteria, but they're, they're bacteria. Almost every mammal group and certainly a lot of non-mammal species have a mycoplasma, including people. Wild sheep are really very closely related to domestic sheep. So if there's a flock of sheep grazing a nice green patch of grass, a herd of bighorns will see that green grass and go, good food, I'll go eat that too. And then they're, they're in close contact. The rams may be scenting the ewes and, and checking to see if they're in estrus, but it's probably more likely that their noses are close together, one coughs or sneezes and droplets are transmitted. The mycoplasma enters the nasal cavity. It reproduces, so you get a lot more mycoplasma in there. Tiny little cells that line the upper respiratory tract and trachea, the windpipe, have little tiny hairs. And those hairs rhythmically beat back and forth to try to remove any particles or any foreign material in those airways. So the mycoplasma attacks those cells and paralyzes those cilia. Any other bacteria can then enter the lung and cause disease. The result of that transfer of organisms has been that those animals will die within a week. The Fraser population of bighorns is, is quite a large population and it ranges all the way from south of Lillooet up to north of Williams Lake. And it's an important population for, for British Columbia in a lot of ways, but it's also got a lot of importance for whole Western North America. As far back as 1994, I was on the Fraser myself and we did necropsies of lambs and we found evidence of pneumonia even then. By the late 90s, some herds had declined by about 90%. I think we were very close to losing some of those bands of sheep. Now more recently, they've seen declines on the west side of the Fraser, north of Lillooet. And not just declines, but absolutely zero lamb production. No lambs survived. We'd be losing something very special on the landscape if we lost wild sheep on the Fraser River. When you really think about it, what's the alternative? Do nothing? or take action. We're here to catch some bighorn sheep and do a management trial that's never been done before in Canada. They haven't seen lambs here for two years in a row. That probably means that those lambs are dying of mycoplasma pneumonia. So if we find positive animals, they're gonna be taken out of the population. We're gonna kill them and we're gonna collect samples from them, but, uh, and their carcasses will be used, but they're going to die. And the point of that is to stop the spread, or? Exactly. To stop the ewes from infecting their newborn lambs. Uh, those lambs are born, but they die within about six weeks, eight weeks of life. And that's what we want to stop, stop that cycle. We had fantastic support from the local guide outfitting community, from local First Nations, from a bunch of stakeholders, including Wild Sheep Society, Wild Sheep Foundation, and others. I had a briefing ahead of time, and I, I started out by saying this, this is going to be hard, and this is not about the individual sheep, this is about the herd. And to date, this herd produces no lambs that survive. Zero. 
none. I think wildlife mirrors the state that the environment is in. So if there's wildlife there, you know it's a healthy functioning ecosystem. And this is for everything. This is for plants, for small animals, for reptiles, for fish. Everything that we see on the landscape. Why wouldn't you want to fix this? You know? <laughs>be sedated till the um, all the test comes back to see if she's positive or negative if she's negative um, they'll give her a shot that stops the sedation and then let her go it's so number 30 here I'm just volunteering making sure she maintains her breath all I'm just chilling out with her and while she's under anesthetic until she gets reversed and hopefully released good friend of mine, Ben Storick, is the outfitter in the area, and, uh, and he just knew this study was going to be going on, just asked me if, while I was here in BC, if I wanted to come in and volunteer my time. She's doing great. She was really feisty. I'm hoping she's uh, a negative sample, because she was super feisty over there, and so I'm hoping she's, she's one that gets to return to the herd. That looks like a positive. I'm gonna go show Helen. Are you not up in a nest okay, Helen. Um, sheep number 30 is positive. She certainly is. So 30 goes. 30 goes. 30 goes. Bad news. She's positive. Oh come on. Very. super spunky too. But she could be the cause of a whole bunch of lambs deaths. Yeah. And it's a really clear, good um, PCR. Yeah, very clear. Are there sometimes false positives or weak positives? Very unlikely. It's amazing the little connection you can make in just a short amount of time. You may as well just take the blindfold off. Everybody ready? So she's positive. Darwin yeah. Wheat, can you yeah. do a prayer with her? Yeah. And I'll be back, but she's fine where she is for now. Okay. I think it's important that we're involved. Our people live off some of this meat and keeping her healthy is always one of our objectives. It's one of our, our directives that we got from the Creator. If you listen to our stories, if you go by creation, it's all human beings have that responsibility, not just First Nations. And we have a respect for all life.
Laura, can you just hold his head for a minute? Yeah. Why don't you take his, his blindfold off? So it's got a Velcro on the back. And then Laura, step back. Yep. It's like, oh no, <laughs> this was unexpected. I don't know, it's hard watching any animal die. Especially when it's over something that can probably be change, like they don't have to die if the policies are fixed. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, they're being euthanized to uh, save the future of the herd, which is a positive. I mean, I wouldn't be in this field if I didn't want to have all the emotions associated with it. And I love my career path and I love being here. I can come back every day. <laughs>